For a thousand years in Scotland, silver was more valued than gold, and one group of objects stand apart. They are quite literally head and shoulders above any other surviving object from the period. They were a massive investment in silver. These are the massive silver chains. The most impressive thing about these chains is the sheer amount of silver. The heaviest example from Torveen is made from almost three kilograms of solid silver. They were all found in the late 18th, the 19th or the early 20th century and some of them were in such poor condition, so badly corroded, so damaged and indeed several were broken apart so that people could try and understand what metal they were made from. But in fact they're made from solid silver. Almost all of the chains are undecorated. Their power comes from their weight, their mass and their material. But two examples do feature decoration, enigmatic designs called Pictish symbols, which are more usually found or carved onto stones in parts of North Scotland. We know relatively little for certain about why the chains were buried. Almost all seem to have been buried by themselves. But whether or not they were deposited for safekeeping or perhaps for something more symbolic. It might be hard to believe, but these chains were designed to be worn around the neck. We can tell from the most complete surviving examples that they would have been worn tight, like a choker. This meant that the weight of the chain was carried by your shoulders rather than quite painfully around your neck. But it also means we can have an idea of who might have worn them. At least some of them were designed for people with quite a small neck diameter, women perhaps or adolescents rather than men. We can't just see these chains as jewellery. They use so much silver, so much more than any other object, that we really have to see them in terms of some kind of regalia, almost the ultimate power symbol at this time in Scotland. The idea of wearing a very powerful and valuable object around your neck wasn't a new one. For hundreds of years, Iron Age people had worn torques around their neck, and these chains are part of that way of showing status and power. The body of each of the chains is made up of pairs of links. At either end there would have been slightly larger rings, one at one end and two at the other. These larger rings were fastened together by a penannula or horseshoe-shaped clasp. One of the big questions still to answer about the chains is exactly how they were made. We don't have any manufacturing evidence that links silver working directly to these chains. There are two strong possibilities. One is that each of the links is cast and then joined to make a chain. Another is that a single rod of silver was formed into a corkscrew shape and cut and bent and formed into each of the links. It's really exciting that you can see for the first time ever all nine massive silver chains here at the National Museum of Scotland in Scotland's early silver until February 2018.